Did you know that you can actually experience a stroke in your spinal cord? Yeah, just like strokes in the brain, you can have a stroke in your spinal cord that can leave you paralyzed. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 65-year-old man who came to the emergency department after standing up from dinner and experiencing a sudden pain in his abdomen. It began in his back and wrapped around his stomach, and within a few minutes, he could no longer use his legs. Upon arrival to the emergency department, he had no movement in his legs and no sense of temperature or pain. But he did have preserved light touch sensation. That is a hallmark presentation of a patient with anterior spinal artery occlusion. A stat MRI of his thoracic spine revealed that he had a spinal cord stroke with the classic owl's eye sign seen on the axial T2 imaging. So let's break down the causes and the treatment of this rare entity. A spinal cord stroke happens in only 1% of all total strokes. And the most common cause of spinal cord stroke is an anterior spinal artery infarct. That's because we only have one anterior spinal artery, but we have two posterior spinal arteries with collateral circulation. That leaves this region of the spinal cord vulnerable to ischemia. Anterior spinal artery originates from branches of the aorta, and any occlusion to those branches of the aorta that form the ASA can lead to infarct. The most common cause is actually surgery to the aorta, such as a triple A repair. During these procedures, if we cross clamp or temporarily change the flow in the aorta, it can leave these arteries vulnerable. Other causes include dissection, trauma, or atherosclerosis, just like you would get a heart attack or a stroke in your brain. That means diabetes, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure all are risk factors, like in our patient. In his case, he experienced sudden onset of pain, and that's actually extremely common in a spinal cord stroke. And this differentiates strokes in the brain in which the patient does not feel pain. That's followed immediately by weakness and alterations in the pain and temperature pathways. Why do you have preserved light touch sensation? That has to do with the neuroanatomy of our spinal cord with the spinothalamic tract being right here and that is the pain and temperature pathways. The cortical spinal tract is located right here and that supplies our movement. The dorsal column medial lamniscus pathway is right here and is unaffected by an infarct to the ASA. The DCML is a sensory pathway in which we feel fine touch as well as two-point discrimination and proprioception. The body's ability to feel fine touch as well as where your body is located in space is still preserved. In addition to affecting the movement, it can also affect the bowel and bladder. It could leave the patient to be incontinent. In our patient, he had a dissection of his aorta that led to occlusion of the artery of Ademkowitz, causing his stroke. And you can see that stroke on the MRI scan. Not only can strokes affect the thoracic spine, but can also occur from any of these branches in the cervical spine, and that can lead to quadriplegia. If the clinical suspicion is not confirmed by MRI, a repeat MRI is often encouraged because initially the MRI can be negative. Unfortunately, due to the rarity of this type of infarct, treatment options have not been well researched. The evidence of thrombolysis and TPA are only on a case-by-case -case basis. That's because we just don't have a lot of patients that have this type of injury, so we don't have a large cumulative base of data to pull outcomes from. Because aortic dissection can be a life-threatening pathology, this must be excluded immediately. This type of problem is fatal in up to 20% of patients, and 50% of those patients do not regain function. Physical therapy, occupational therapy, and rehabilitation is extremely important for long-term benefit. Our patient was treated with antiplatelet therapy, but did not regain the movement in his legs and is still wheelchair-bound. Remember that hypertension or high blood pressure is called the silent killer for a reason. It's important to treat it because even if you don't feel like anything's wrong, it can lead to long-term medical complications, including heart disease and stroke. If you have high blood pressure or have a loved one that has high blood pressure, please make sure they're, they're getting this monitored frequently. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case and Happy New Year.